Hello everybody, in this video we're going to look at quadratic equations with irrational solutions. So doing a normal trinomial won't work to do those quadratic equations, we have to use the quadratic formula. In the previous video we looked at quadratic equations in general and if you're in grade 11 and grade 12 this was more of a recap of what you did in grade 9 and grade 10. So we looked at general quadratic equations, I taught you what standard form is, this is essential to remember for this video, and the steps to solving a quadratic equation. So remember, we know it's quadratic if we see a squared term, we make it equal to zero, standard form, descending powers of x, so x squared, then x to the power of one, then the constant term. We factorize, we make each bracket equal to zero, we've got two solutions. Now take note how in the previous video, our solutions were always rational numbers. Okay, negative four, negative three, a third, negative a half. Remember, rational numbers can be written as a fraction in the form of a over b, Obviously, the bottom of the fraction can't be zero because then it would be undefined. But that's rational numbers. Also, decimals that stop like 1,25, fractions like 3 over 4, numbers like negative 2 or 3. Those are all rational numbers. Today, we're going to speak about quadratic equations where our solutions, our answers are irrational. Now, the most famous irrational number is pi. If you convert that on your, des uh, on your calculator to decimals, you get 3,14, and the number goes on and on and on. So it's numbers that do not stop. They have a random repeating decimal number here. It's not something like, remember, rational could be 1,3333. Yes, it doesn't stop, but it's a pattern. Irrational goes on and on and on, random repeating, num random numbers that don't repeat. So we're going to be looking at that today. So for example, if I had to give you this one over here and I had to say solve for x, knowing what you know now, you would say, okay, it's a quadratic equation. It's got a square. It's in standard form. It's equal to zero. Now, according to Miss Martin's steps that she wrote out for us, we need to factorize. We need to do HCF, dots, or trinomial. But no matter how hard you try, if you attempt to do a trinomial with these numbers, a normal trinomial like I taught you in my playlists using our methods, you won't be able to do a trinomial. So if you've tried step one and step two over here and you get a trinomial that you can't factorize, you need to use the quadratic formula to get your two solutions. So this is the quadratic formula. And yes, in some schools, some grades, you do have to memorize it. So there it is. I did find a very cute so uh, song, very helpful, on YouTube that helped me memorize it. So I'll link it in the description box below. I'm not going to sing it for you because that would be terrible, but I'll link it down below for you. And you basically, everywhere where you see a letter, B, B, A, C, A, in the place of the variables, the letters, you're going to substitute a number and a sign. So for example, a negative two or a one or a three. How do you know what to substitute in? Well, we can write trinomials in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, a is going to be the coefficient, the number and sign. So plus minus the number and sign in front of the squared term. So once you know what that is, in the place of a, that is where you're going to substitute that in with brackets. Then b is the coefficient, the number and sign in front of x. You're going to substitute that in to the formula with brackets. And C is our constant term, so the one with no variable in our trinomial, and you're going to substitute that in with brackets in the place of C. And when we substitute into our formula base of our trinomial on our coefficients, we will get two solutions. Remember, a quadratic formula has two solutions, two roots, two solutions. That is why the formula says plus minus, because you're going to type all of this in your calculator with brackets, with the numbers substituted in, I'll show you now, to get the one solution. Here, you're going to make it a plus. You're going to write that solution down. Then, to get the other solution, you're going to take away the plus here and replace it with a minus. That's why it says plus minus. So if I were to give you this question and I had to say solve for x, first things first, it's an equation equal to zero. It's got x squared, so it's quadratic. We need to get it in standard form. So make it equal to zero, done. Descending powers of x, so x squared, then x to the power of one, basically, and then no x. That's what descending means, going down. Then what you would do after this is you would try to factorize it first. So do a trinomial like normal. You can try, but you will see that you cannot do a normal trinomial to help solve this equation. So therefore, you will need to use the quadratic formula. Now, in order to use a quadratic formula, you need to look for your a, b, and c value because you need to substitute those in. So the a value is the coefficient, number, and sign in front of x squared. So that is positive 2. Your B value is the number and sign, the coefficient in front of X. So that is negative four. And then your C value is your constant value, the value or the, the number with no variable next to it. Number and sign, in this case, it's positive one. 
It does help to list this. Then we're going to write out the quadratic formula. You don't need to write out the quadratic formula on your paper. You can do this on your calculator. So what you'll be typing in on your calculator is x is equal to, the formula says negative b. So negative, now b is negative 4, so you need to put it in brackets. So it's going to say negative, in brackets, negative 4. Then it says plus minus in your formula. But remember, to get one of the solutions, we're going to make it a plus. And to get the other, we're going to change that to a minus. So let's keep it a plus for now. Then we've got our square root, b squared. Now in brackets, this is essential, everybody. In brackets, you put your b, which is negative 4. Don't forget to square it like the formula says. Then negative 4, as the formula says, your a value is 2. Okay, just like in the formula. Your c value is 1 just like in the formula, and then divide all of that by 2a. So 2, and your a value is 2. Now, just to highlight a few things that my students have done wrong when I teach this to them in class, they forget to put brackets when they're substituting. You need to put brackets in. It's essential. The other thing that I've seen students do wrong is when they type it in their calculator, they make the root shorter than what it should be. So they stop it there. No, it needs to cover this entire piece here. So the root must go over b squared minus 4ac. That must all be tucked underneath the root inside the little house. And another thing that I think is worth mentioning is that for some reason, when you use your calculator, some people's calculators, when you are typing in, for example, you're saying negative, and then we had negative three, like this, okay? Plus, minus, and then we carried on typing. For some reason, when you substitute in this minus and you use this one over here, instead of this one over here, sometimes your calculator will give you weird math errors. So just play around with that. If your calculator is giving you a math error after you've typed this in, you've made a mistake because the only time you should get a math error when using the quadratic formula is when your number underneath the root. So remember, you're going to substitute numbers in here. When whatever it is that you've substituted in here, if this little piece is a negative number, and only if it's a negative number, then your calculator is going to give you an answer that is non-real. So if it's a negative under the square root, then your answer is it's non-real. Okay, there's going to be no real solution because as you should know, square root of a negative number is a non-real number. So the only time your calculator should give you issues is if this piece under here, and you could actually work it out, this piece under here, only if that's negative, then you will get no real solutions. But in our case, we should get, in our case, with the sum that we've done, we should get, if you type exactly this into your calculator, you should get x is equal to, your calculator should say 2, plus square root 2 over 2. Remember, that is one of your solutions. For a quadratic formula, so when we see x squared, we need two solutions, two roots, two answers. So we're going to say or x equals. In order to get the other solution, we change on the formula this, which to get this solution, I made it a plus. Okay, it was a plus to get this solution. Then we're going to change it to a minus so essentially take that away over here, make it a minus on your calculator to get the other solution. And you should get 2 minus root 2 over 2. So there's my two solutions. If they ask for it in third form, you leave it like this. So third form means that you will see roots like this, okay? If they want it in decimal form, you will press the SD button on your calculator. That's for most calculators. It's this button over here. And you will get... 1,71 for my one solution and 0, 0,29 for my other solution. As you can see, these are rational numbers, irrational numbers. So if you get them on your calculator, the one solution, for example, looks like that. As you can see, the numbers go on and on and on. I just rounded them off to two decimals. So go ahead, memorize your quadratic formula. I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye, everyone.